I'm Jenna. Hello, I'm Gloria. We We are are Worthy Worthy Wellness. Wellness. Because we are worth it. Our purpose is to introduce women entrepreneurs, products, and services while proceeds help women in need for holistic care and therapy services. Welcome, Welcome, ladies. ladies. The Wellness Podcast today. Today, Jenna and I have the honor and privilege of interviewing Bibi and Desiree from Oak Tree Village, and it's a nonprofit that these two lovely ladies have created to help caregivers who care give. So um, we're look, we're looking forward to today's interview. I know that this is a very big topic um, in our community, but basically all around the world, and so many people having to care give for their families. So um, without further ado, hi Bibi and hi Des, how are you? Hi. Hi. <laughs> we are we are good on this lovely lovely day in the what is it spring or summer but winter outside yeah <laughs> exactly exactly so bb and des can you tell us a bit about yourselves did you want to go first <laughs> uh, sure uh, <laughs> so i um, my name is desiree Patterson, and um i am a mother i am a wife and i am a caregiver to my mother who has parkinson's um and we live with her and um i do have some assistance during the week because i also have a full-time job as well as hope tree village um so juggling it all and um and this is where Hope Tree Village comes to help us self-care and wellness. <laughs> yeah. And so <clears throat> for myself, um, I am a wife. I am a dog mom. <laughs> I am an aunt. I am a god mom. Um, I, I take care of both uh, my mom and my mother-in-law. Um, my husband and I were very outdoorsy. We like to go on hikes and, um, we like to travel, even if it's for the weekend, those are our little getaways. Um, and I like to cook and bake and, you know, spend, I'm very, very close with my family. So I get to spend a lot of time with them, but, um, most of the time is, is, is work. Cause again, I just like Desiree, I have a job, um, as well as doing hope tree and then my husband and I go back and forth with taking care of my mom, which thankfully she's only less than a mile away from us. And my mother-in-law, um, <clears throat> who we help my my father-in-law with, because he's 82, um, she's bedridden um, and we help them. And they only live about 20 minutes from us. But so with that, we, you know, we work and we, and we do what we need to do, but also take care of them because uh, that's super important. <clears throat> That's amazing. Wow. My goodness, your plates are full. I mean, you don't have plates, you have platters, for goodness sakes. They're <laughs> <laughs> like massive buffet pad. They're charcuterie platters. My goodness. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I and I think, you know, um, that's that's where it comes into like Desiree said, you know, making sure that we take care of ourselves because when things we do so much, you know, on a daily basis and running around that if if you don't, even if it's for five or 10 minutes of the day or taking a hike or whatever you like to do, um, then you do cut you you do start slowing down and your body starts slowing down. So it's important to remember the wellness of yourself. I love that. Yeah. So tell us how you two met. How did you guys meet? <laughs> <laughs> this is a funny story because I would I when I was thinking about it, I was like, oh my gosh, it's been like 22, 23 years ago. We yeah. met through a mutual friend um who was getting married. And we were we had we had never met before and we were in her wedding and and that's how we met. And um since then we've been friends. It was around that that long ago, right, Des? Yeah, yeah, because her son is in his early twenties and and now and married. He's married. <laughs> <laughs> so now, so now we're old, and <laughs> and yeah. Uh, yeah, it's been a long time. But yeah, it was it was um, bridesmaids who just became friends. Wow, I like that story. That's really good. You didn't know each other, and you met at a wedding. I love yeah. that story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's meant to be. 
I love that. And you know what? What else I thought about is that the two people we were with at that time at that <laughs> wedding, in our mutual friend, um, she got a divorce, and we are no longer with the two boyfriends we had at that time. <laughs> Yeah. So she has a new husband, we have our husband. Yes. And it, it was a glorious time to meet each other. <laughs> I love it. That is great. You outlasted, you outlasted all of that. A marriage. Yeah. Yes. I love it. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Friendship, as they say, true sisterhood. Yeah. yeah. So, so and and I think that's that's knowing that like everything that we've gone through got us here. Yeah. I mean, and so what you brought you both together as business partners, I mean, when and how is it you both decided, you know what, this is really something that we need to do. I, I'm interested to hear that. Well, COVID. COVID. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> COVID and, um, and just, you know, it's those checking in calls and venting calls and how do I, where do I find, this is so hard. Um, and we, we, we would get together and, and we'd be outside and, um, we, we went to the beach a lot. <laughs> we did. And, um, and it was just this conversation. My mom, um, my, so my mom was diagnosed with Parkinson's in 2020. So, um, and, and BB was, had, um, already been caring for her mom. And so it was like, where do you find the strength? Where do you find this? You know, how do you, how do you do this? And it was like, gosh, if this is how, what we're going through, like there's, there's gotta be others like us that are going through this. Why don't we talk about this? Why, why is there not, why isn't there more resources and why isn't there more conversations? Um, and that's and, really what got us started on it. Yeah. And I think, oh, I, sorry, I just get emotional. But I think when we think about COVID, it was such a hard time for both of us. Um, November before COVID hit, I had lost my dad. Um, suddenly, he was like the healthiest man on earth. And I lost him. And uh, he had an aortic aneurysm. So that was November of 2019. And when he had that, my mom had just gotten out of the hospital. Um, we almost lost her. She had, um, oh my gosh, I forgot the name now. Uh, colostomy. Uh, uh, she had a colostomy bag put in. I don't know if anybody knows what that is, but <coughs> she actually almost passed away um, because her the, her intestines had split, <clears throat> which connects to her rectum, and all. And when that happened, she got. Um, you know, poison within her body. So they had to do uh, emergency surgery. And so now she has a colostomy bag and she lost feeling in her legs. There was a bunch of stuff going on. Um, she got to the hospital. So we were taking care of her here. And 10 days later, my dad passes. So um, at the time, obviously, when COVID hits, we're still taking care of my mom. My mother-in-law had already had two strokes and was bedridden. And then Desiree finds out, you know, within the, in 2020, that her mom has Parkinson's. So I think at that time, with both of us going through so much and, and having to still, you know, try to lead your life with COVID, it's like, how, how can we help each other? And then, okay, now, we don't have it figured out, but we have it enough figured out that we need to help other people because whether it's grief or, um, you know, just, just going day by day, taking care of your parent or grandparent or even kids, it's not easy because it changes your whole life. Your whole life is, is turned around. So that's another thing that people, I think if they haven't gone through this kind of thing, they don't realize the effect that it can have on your your whole life. I'm thankful that my husband is so supportive and he's so amazing that everything that I had gone through at that time um, and, and everything he went through, um, we were able to support each other and stay strong in our marriage. Uh, so I think, you know, those are things that people need to know and people I'm sure when they go through it have questions and 
And we know to answer in a very truthful and honest way that, it, you know, it's not always going to be easy, but always take care of yourself first. You, well, you both have Jenna and I here crying. Because, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> because what, I mean, talk about emotional, inspirational, and you two walking together as true friends, but family, because now you are family having to go through this together. I mean, and that's a lot to go through. A lot of tragedy, a lot of sadness. You know, you're trying to grieve at the same time. Maybe you're taking care of your mom, you know, and does a thing, you know, getting that diagnosis for your mother. I mean, that's that's heavy. That's that's a lot. So, you know, my heart is just full of compassion for both of you, but love at the same time that you guys are, you know, good friends that you help each other out. And Bibi, your husband, wow, that's a, that is something that, I mean, I think we need to do an interview with him. <laughs> I agree. I, yeah. agree. you know, in, in 2018 is when his mom had his, her first um, stroke. And then her second stroke was early 2019 and second. And we thought, you know, we were going to lose her and we were going through days of where he wasn't even home, you know, and I thought, gosh, you know, this is the hardest thing that I'm ever, that not that I'm ever going to deal with, you know, but that I can never go through. And, and then to have that happen was just like, okay, when is this going to stop? <laughs> you know, like, but you just keep going, you keep going and you keep going. And um, I will say that I, I, Thankful enough, like I said, we're outdoorsy people. So when we could, we would go hikes. We did a lot of hikes. Um, working out, we we did that when we could. Um, we work a lot in our yard. So just little things like that where we could still keep an eye on my mom or go to his parents' house or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. um, we still, we had to do it, you know, or movies. Um, and then if we could get a weekend away, then then we would do that. So yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. And Des with your mom. Um, so you were with her 24 seven, you care for her 24 seven. I mean, other when you're working. So, <laughs> yeah. So with my mom, um, there's no one in our family that we know that has Parkinson's. And as we're going through this journey, we don't, we've come to find out it's not um, necessarily hereditary, at least mm -hmm. for what they know in the research. Um, but we do live with my mom and, um, and I have an 11 year old daughter. Um, and see, baby, you can make me cry now. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> and like, well, I, it's, hard. it's hard. Her, her. Um, and, and, and then my husband, um, I am a person who knew at some point because my grandmother had Alzheimer's, the anticipation was that my mom would have Alzheimer's and that I would have to take care of her. Um, I did not expect it to happen so early on for my mom for this diagnosis. Um, I haven't really had a lot of experience with, with death and illness and it actually scares me. And I, and prior to my mother, um, I'd run away from it. Um, so it's one of those things that it's a really big reality check of the mistakes you make um, and the fact that you don't wanna run away from people when they have a death in the family or the, or a death of a friend or, or, you know, or an illness in their family. It's something where you need to talk about it. You need to be there, you need to be support, you need, you know, and, and know that at some point it can happen to you. And, um, you know, I made that mistake with BB and and we were able to talk about it afterwards and and heal from it. And I've learned a lot along the way. And so I do lean on her a lot of how do you do this? How do you how how do you get through it? Um beach days were her idea because I am not an outdoorsy person. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I like to look at it from a window. Um, <laughs> um, my, you know, my, my self-care is sitting in front of the TV and binge watching TV or um, just being by myself. I'm a really big introvert. Um, my husband and I have a uh, up and down relationship. So um, in the beginning of 
my mother's diagnosis, we our marriage was not doing well. Um, so that was also on top of it. Um, and then having a daughter and having to explain to her what's happening to her grandmother. Um, because prior to my mother being sick, she was she was caregiving for and taking care of my daughter while I worked full time. So um, I have help Monday through Friday for about five hours a day. Um, and then outside of that, it's myself and and my husband um, and my daughter, because I, you know, I, she sees it and, and I don't want her to be afraid of it. And I want her to learn that it's just a part of life and we are and this is part of what we do for our family um and so it's it's this is it's such a neat such an experience that it's also therapeutic in a, in a way to help people and when we don't know answers or we don't know quite what what their unique story is that we we're going to go find the answers we want to help we we want to help bring them peace we it 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 helps bring us happiness when we see others healing as well yeah <clears throat> and just just for people to know they they have to talk about it right they they need to talk about their struggles they need to talk about <clears throat> what they're going through because i mean we you know, Des and I have been to a couple of mental health um, seminars or, or things where we're trying to learn more about mental health and, and the effects that it's having because it's such a big deal right now. And and the biggest thing is is asking, uh, well, talking about, you know, whatever situation you're going to, through, but also um, asking for help um because that's something you know that most of us don't like to do or we're not used to it um <clears throat> i'm very i'm very grateful and thankful that i have dang it <laughs> <laughs> i'm a, i'm the youngest of four so i have um two sisters and a brother and like mm -hmm. i said i'm super close super 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 close to my family we talk every day numerous times during the day even if it's just text messages um but because of them, it's like, you know, sometimes you can talk to family and it's different when you talk to somebody else. So you you just have to learn to know they're just there's people out there to talk mm -hmm. to no matter what. Um, but I, I'm grateful for them because, again, if if I didn't have them, it would be really tough for for everything we went through but i also have amazing friends and um and this is why we do it and as we go on even our friends are now becoming a caregiver whether it's to their kid that maybe has some type of uh you know whether they're autistic or something like that you know that's changed their life or now they're taking care of their parents or their grandparents and they're like oh my gosh we just we didn't understand at the time when you guys would talk about this, what what you meant. Now we understand, you know, we see our parents and we see that they're they're not the same, you know, and they just just that emotion behind it. That's that's what we want people to know. It's it's normal and it's OK, but talk about it. Yeah, I. I absolutely. First of all, I'm still in awe just sitting here. Jen, Jen and I are sitting here trying not to cry because, you know, she relates so much with both of you in regards to her being a caregiver for her mom. Yeah. And I relate, you know, being a caregiver or helping my sister when for our mother. And then of course, you know, when I caregived for a family member. So I completely, completely understand. But you know, I have a daughter-in-law, Heather, that is now I'm gonna cry because she's amazing. Now she cares for both her parents. And uh, her dad has also been diagnosed with Parkinson's and she homeschools my three grandbabies. Yeah. So, you know, it's a lot on her platter. But with that being said and everything that you've talked about, I know the two of you have created a magnificent nonprofit called Hope Tree Village. Um, please tell our listeners about that. Oh, well, this, you know, the, the great part of Hope Tree is kind of like everything we've been talking about, but but a little more where um, we provide, uh, we're a wellness center uh, for care, for family caregivers. Um, so we provide resources, but I, 
you know, whether they need um, help if the care, the family caregivers needs help, maybe extra help for their, their parents, you know, finding extra caregiving help for them, or they need a wheelchair or anything like that. But I think what Des and I really strive on and what we really love is, is our wellness services, um, just providing wellness for our caregivers out there. So whether it's a music therapy session or, or uh, in the kitchen cooking class with us. Some things are virtual, some are in, in person. Um, essential oil classes, because essential oils are a big part of our wellness journey. And just, I know when we met you, Gloria, you saw our table and it's just full of oils because- that, <laughs> It was great. That, yeah, whether it's anxiety, whether it's your tired, no matter what it is, you know, it just, it, it just helps so much. Um, and then having events, you know, um, it, I know we talked about any events that were coming up and we have once a month, it's our Sunday event. It's our self-care, right, Des? Self, yeah, Last, our self-love self session. Love. <laughs> yeah. I, I make up my own events. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the last the last Sunday of every month. And then in between there we have other events too. But that but it's good and those are virtual and we'll probably start having some in person as well. Um but does you want to talk about the last one that we had? Um yeah, it was amazing. So what we basically do is during the self-love session, it is 30 minutes of virtual wellness and and what we're trying to do is just show you show people how you can in different ways have wellness in such short amount of time and how easy it is. So um, we, in honor of um, May being um, Asian American Pacific Islander um, Heritage Awareness Month, um, we we had it all themed around Bibi's Hawaiian culture that she gets from her mom. And so um, we started with a brief five minute meditation. And then we had the honor and privilege of having not only her mom, but two of her mom's hula friends um, come and hula. And so Bibi's mom did chair hula while the other two ladies did hula and then um if you see the video bb and i are in the background attempting to <laughs> hula <laughs> um but getting you know <laughs> laughing along the way but being in awe of these ladies and watching them and the beautiful movements that they make um while they dance and and then we um and then we went on to do some drinking for your health with um pineapple and with essential oils as well as a healthy pineapple snack um and and then and also adding a little twist because we'd like to have our adult beverages <laughs> as part of our self-care so yeah. we believe it, we truly believe in the balance of um of what's good for you and a little of what's not good for you <laughs> yeah um and so but um, the one that the one that's this month is going to be on June 25th, and mm -hmm. um, and this one we're going to be doing virtual vision and wellness boards, um, and so we're super super excited about that. And you know, and the and every Friday we go live on Instagram and we do feelings of gratitude Fridays, and we do this so that we take that moment on Fridays, and it's for a half an hour sometimes a little less depending on our, on our schedules. And yeah. it's taking that moment to ask a question, to put yourself in that posture of gratitude so that you are in that, and that viewpoint of positivity. And, um, and you know, and, and some days the, fl the answers flow and other days it doesn't and that's okay. And, and we're there to also make people laugh and we laugh ourselves. And sometimes <laughs> we, and sometimes we cry there as well. Yeah. Um, and, and and any of our events and any of our services and any of our community is all about no judgment and making sure that the, that everyone feels welcome and safe and and knowing that they can just come as they are and um we have a whole section on our website of self-care because self-care looks so different um for everyone because if you told me i was going on a hike of self-care i would cry and <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and if, and and if I think, maybe, maybe watch TV for five hours, she'd be like, what yeah. are we doing sitting here? <laughs> and I think that, you know, that's a good point is that everyone's 
everyone's wellness journey is different, um, but also just making it available, talking to people about what you do. Because like Desiree said, she never really went to the beach. And I was like, okay, we're going to the beach. And we went a lot. And when I tell you a lot, we went a lot. And right now I need to go because I need a tan. But, you know, that was something that then she found she really enjoys. And it gets her, it gets her somewhere else. It gets her daughter there. It gets her mind just, just mm -hmm. relaxing and having a good time. Um, but also even, you know, we know cocktails aren't for everyone, but that's something when we get them in it to have one, we do have one. And, yeah. and so you just have to find what works, what works for you. I um, love but, it. Yeah. But there's, there's so many, so many different ways and, and we try to find balance, you know, with the different classes we do, the different events that we do. Um, you know, anything from even a, a face mask and making salt scrubs to, I think one of my favorite events that we did and it was in January, what was our let it go event. And we yeah. did it at the beach and we, it was, um, I, for, I think it was, was it 15 of us does. And we saw yes. it was in the evening surrounding the bonfire and we had a yogi there and she did meditation first. And then she just guided everybody through this let it go event and really writing down. It was nice. We chose to do it in January because it's at the beginning of the year and we wanted to let go of stuff from the year past. So writing it down, you could share it or not share it and then throwing it into the fire. And then she had us all stand together and just yell out loud and let everything go it was so so soulful, so great, and so powerful. <clears throat> we we have people asking us all the time to do it again. So um, we are going to do it again. We just have to get the dates down. But I have to tell you, if you haven't done it, or even if you have, um, do it because it is so good for the heart, and it just it it just really just clears clears your mind. It's it's very healing. It's very oh, very healing. So, so healing. Oh, your soul heals so much from doing something like that. It's yes. just cathartic, but it's truly truly healing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I love that we got connected because I'm an occupational therapist and like you were mentioning there's like the durable medical equipment and I think it would just be so awesome because some of my patients say that they get like a delivered service for like a extra walker that they didn't need just because it's like on auto, you know, pilot for the home health service so it'd be kind of neat if people could donate the, the equipment they don't need anymore and then pass it along in your community. Oh and, my gosh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, I could start maybe asking around because one of my patients has an extra walker that's in the box still. So that would be kind of <laughs> pretty neat. And um, a lot of caregivers that I see are not only like the families, but they're kind of- Have that. Um, yeah, and they can't can afford it or so anything, you know? Yeah. Yes. And, you know, what I wanted to ask is, you know, do you have stats or, you know, how you see the demand in caregivers? And do you see it more amongst um, families that are caregivers? Or like for me, I usually see them outsourced with agencies. So I just feel like definitely there it, it's a growing need for sure. I think, are you, are you asking like, um, like you, the percentage of like a, like a family caregiver or. Yeah. Like I, I, do you see that obviously your services are amazing. And so there's a growing demand for like occupational therapy, not many people knew of, and they knew of more physical therapy. So now there's more of a demand of, of OT occupational therapy. Yeah. So for caregivers, I feel like that's the direction we're kind of going in is that there's more caregivers that are in demand, especially if people want home health services and not necessarily like in hospital or facilities, because that's kind of what I observe with my Medicare geriatric patients is that they would rather be home. And if they could choose their family, they would choose their family over like an agency and yeah. um yeah, so I just wanted to kind of hear your input on any of that. <laughs> well, yeah, I want. Uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was say well, one of the interesting things um, when as we were having this conversation, and then we've had conversations with friends and things, is that 
it's the, the title of caregiver. And so in our cultures, um, in, in BB's and mine, this is just what our, our family does. This is what we do. And this is what every generation does. And, and, um, and so for us to, to even say the title caregiver isn't always easy. And it's like, no, this is just taking care of my parent. This is just taking care of my family members. So I think there's a lot of people out there that don't define themselves with that title. And so the stats are huge and there are millions of caregivers and there, and, um, there's a, and there are millions of family caregivers. I also think it's a skewed number because of the fact that that title, um, isn't, they don't, not everyone will apply it to themselves and, but it is a number that is growing and it is growing on a daily basis. Yeah. I think in like, so for example, for Des and I, or, you know, and you and Gloria, so we would fit into that, that sandwich caregiver role, right? Where we're working and we have a family and we're, and we're caregiving for somebody. in the family. So that's at like, um, and, and we have, we actually posted it on our website so people know the sandwich caregiver name. And there's, there's actually within the care, the sandwich caregiver community, there's 11 million sandwich caregivers. Um, and then you have, like you talked about the, the caregiver that, you know, would, you would hire to go to your home or something like that. I don't have the, the percentage on that, but, um, I have been approached, um, actually at my job, I work for a holistic chiropractor and I was approached, there's a caregiver that goes in and she said, you know, she works at a facility where they care give for people. And she's like, we would need somebody like you guys to come in too, because we taking care of these people, they may not be our family, but they become mm-hmm. our family and we still go through grief and we still go through, you know, um, needing that wellness back, you know, to help us go through what we go through with them every day, whether they're dealing with someone with dementia or, you know, or just a broken leg. So um, I think that that it's because people are accepting the name caregiver, where whether it's a family caregiver a sandwich caregiver or a caregiver outside in in a in a um in the what I don't know what you would call it in an organization um I think they all need some type of of wellness and and they all deal with some type of emotional you know background that they they need they need to find a little space for themselves most definitely Thank you for sharing that. And, you know, with all the amazing, you know, services you guys uh, offer, how do you see Hope Tree Village growing and in what new directions are you maybe going to add or, you know, what you what you envision? Well, I think becoming the nonprofit, because that's very recent, that's within the last two months. Um, and that was a big deal for us because we were going back and forth from becoming for becoming a nonprofit for a long time. <laughs> and people are like, <laughs> you guys have to be coming on profit. You know, you guys could help so, so many more people. And and so that was a huge deal for us. And when we became nonprofit, we were so excited. And this has just opened a lot more doors for us to to want to do more events, um, want to raise more awareness for the caregiving community, and also just to raise funds for the caregiving community. And even if it's just not funds, anything like we always talk about, if you have anything to donate, donate, because there are people out there that don't have the funding to buy, you know, the person they're caring for a wheelchair or a walker or, or a portable toilet or, uh, you know, so anything that we can help people with, I think getting out to our community, our, our goal is to very soon be able to not work our full-time jobs and work and put everything to Hope Tree, like be able to leave them and everything goes full on towards Hope Tree. And we have a a, a building where we provide all the wellness and the resources right there for them. So if they want to do yoga or they want to have meditation, 
we have a room for that. If they want to get a massage, we have a room for that. You know, anything that provides them with wellness, um, we want to be able to have it, you know, there for them. Amazing. Yeah. I like that. That those Grief coaching, that you, have, you know. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure you're going to achieve them. Right. I mean, we're sitting here looking at each other smiling because, you know, we were just talking about that before we logged on about, you know, getting our space because that's what we've been wanting as well. Yes. The wellness center where people can come in. Um, I call it Casa de Amor, you know, House of Love. Oh, I love it. Yeah. So women, and I geared it towards women, but women toward to come in and have their sacred space, you know, their safe space, not non-judgmental space. Yes. And if they want to do a yoga class, they can. If they want to do meditation, they can. A cooking class, you know, have a sisterhood Sunday, you know, where we can just be. And because that's what we need. And for caregivers who are caregiving, it's something that they need for themselves. And I love that idea. I think I think I see something on the on the books for us working, yeah. with you, right? <laughs> yes. you yeah. know, my, my goal is to have that nationwide. And you know, I think that would be just lovely because wellness is so important, but to know that you're worth being well and being and having self self-love and self-care is so important right now. Um, you two ladies are just amazing. Just amazing. Yes. And before we wrap up, I was just wondering, do you have any upcoming events that you wanted to share for the listeners and maybe people that have are discovering you for the first time, they would love to, to join in on these upcoming events or donate or to donate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This Go ahead. Go ahead with this. Sorry. <laughs> this That's month, um, this month, everything is virtual. So um, we have our, like we mentioned, our feelings of gratitude Fridays on Instagram uh, live every Friday at 530 Pacific Standard Time. Um, and then we have our self-love session, which will be on Sunday, June 25th at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And that'll be on all the um, all the platforms that we can be on at one time. So Facebook <laughs> Live, Instagram Live, and Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, and we will be um, so we we will be posting on all of our social channels um, about about um, the Zoom link for that. And it's already on our calendar, which you can know um, every month we we post our calendar that can be downloaded or saved on your phone, so you can keep up with all of our events. But those are our events for June that we have going on. Awesome. Yeah. And how can people get a hold of you? Would you like to share all of your contact information and they can stay tuned for everything? Say oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, we have our, our website, which is www.hopetreevillage.com. And that's H-O-P-E-T-R-E-E-V-I. L L A G E dot com. So that's our website. And like Des said, uh, for upcoming events, we we have a pop up that comes up for upcoming events, as well as they can go into our village calendar. Um, and then you can, if they want to contact us, they can email um, same thing at hopetreevillage dot com or info at hopetreevillage dot com, and then. All of our social media platforms is at Hope Tree Village. Again, it's H O P E T R E E V I L L A G E. Is there anything else I'm missing? Oh, our phone number? <laughs> <laughs> that phone number is 657 341 2027. So, and if you can't get a hold of those us on any of those platforms, <laughs> feel free to send an owl. And we will find you. <laughs> or a smoke signal, yes. yes. <laughs> I love it. You guys have just been such a pleasure, such a pleasure to interview. Well, thank you yeah, so, thank so you. much for having us on. I'm so glad that we were able to meet at the Bray Wellness event. And I, I see a, a lot of things in store for us and coming together and having events and just having a really good time. I, I see the same. I, I look forward to planning some stuff together and getting our wellness community even bigger and stronger. 
Yes. So I totally see that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Most definitely. And I just cannot wait to meet you in person and I will be joining your upcoming events. Mm-hmm. Yay! 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 Hey, ladies, thank you so much for everything. We wish you a beautiful and blessed evening. And the rest of the week. The rest of the week. Thank you, girls. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. you. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 If you're also a woman entrepreneur to support our cause and would like to be considered on this podcast, please reach out to us. We would love to connect. We see you. We want to connect, empower, and inspire others. So please call or text or even fax 949-793-8781 or our Instagram is Worthy Wellness Inc. Like I-N-C. Hope to hear from you and thank you for listening.